You're listening to Inside the Minds Podcast with Dante Marsh and Ryan Hyde, where we talk about sports, life, and whatever the hell else we want to talk about. What's Jesse, up, dude? My man, how's it going, brother? Awesome. I just uh, I just got off a marathon set of phone calls with lawyers, and then my mom. So oh. the, the mom was the scariest one, of course. <laughs> I uh, sorry. I hope I didn't didn't interrupt you and your conversation with your mom when I texted you. Oh no, 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 brother! You gave me my out, so I thank you for it. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, everybody that's uh, watching in live on my uh, on my Facebook, welcome to the Inside the Minds podcast. We are live with uh, lead singer of the Eagles of Death Metal, Jesse Hughes, aka Father Badass. How's it going tonight, Jesse? Awesome, man. You know, every day I'm breathing is a is a good day, but it's I'm a little. I'll tell you, the past two months have been uh, been intense. Yeah. And I think we are actually going to head there right now, if that's cool with you, Jesse. Um, I'm assuming a lot of the listeners haven't heard the story. And if you don't mind even just starting from the start and uh, filling everybody in on what's going on. Well, um, at the end of January, roughly the 23rd, um, I came home to find my girl in the beginning states of a cardiac arrest. It was induced by uh, an asthma attack. And being that I'm just a couple blocks from the hospital and was with a friend, we managed to get her to the hospital in two minutes. Wow. And she, they resuscitated her. And that's when it all gets very difficult and janky because she was in a coma. And at the very beginning, it was very hopeful. But then on the third day she was there, a doctor called me on the phone, on the phone and tried to talk me into taking her off life support on the phone. And I was inherently shocked by that, but I also was like, no way, just to make it easy for you guys, I'm never ever going to stop fighting for her. And that's when they illegally and secretly gave power of attorney to her estranged mother. And then I was cut out. And I was only able to glean any information because of the miraculous intervention of a multitude of medical professionals and, and an army of people across the world. And uh, I found out that essentially they were hell bent on taking her organs, that they had already begun a process of removing nutrition from her feeding tube and keeping her on a ventilator uh, half of every day, which put her in an oxygen deficiency and then would eventually cause cardiac arrest at which point they could take her organs. So I filed uh, a court proceeding and got a restraining order against the hospital, forcing them to return all life-saving and life-maintaining elements and preventing them from doing anything. Within a day of this court order, it was announced to us that she was breathing on her own. Wow. And in the course of this uh, legal case, the mother, for whatever reason, decided to, uh, I guess, help our case by talking to a journalist and that's when we discovered that she was awake and that not only was she awake and attempting to breathe on her own but she'd been awake and attempting to breathe on her own since the first week she'd gotten there wow and so whatever the intentions are as a matter of court record and facts so this isn't libelous or anything we know that they sedated medicated and uh, uh, otherwise prevented her from seeming like she was recovering. 
they maintained to me and everyone else that she was in a deep state of code blue coma, could never be resuscitated, could never breathe on her own, could never uh, wake up while she was actively in the processes of waking up. They, they prevented that and it took a court order. And then the day before court, they moved her in the middle of the night secretly to another facility, thus taking themselves out of liability. And now I've been able to visit with her. I've, I've been able to redirect her care. Um, she smiles at me. She, um, she recognizes me. She's, she's been hurt really bad. You know, she's survived a lot of stuff and, but she's going to recover. And when I'm able to get her fully recovered, I am, I, I have to, I have a moral duty to return my full scope of attention to the horror that is what I've been experiencing at the hands of our medical community. So that's the skinny. The beauty of it is she's beautiful. I got to visit her for the first time uh, a week ago and I was very scared. I didn't know how she was gonna look, but when I turned that corner and saw her for the first time, every single possible thing I went through has been worth it. I've never seen anything more beautiful in my life than my girl. And I could take a million times the hits I've taken now and she's worth every second of it. Wow, of course. Absolutely. Wow. Sorry, Jesse. I, I don't, man. I don't even know what to say. Like on, you know, it's like it's crazy. I th I think God loves Tuesday very much, and He's using her in a way to help a lot of people because this is something that is is a something that hasn't ha just happened one time. And I've discovered that a human body who's of decent health under the age of 35 can generate up to $35 million in total from having their body harvested. That's crazy. That's insane, right? That's, and yeah. that's 35 million pretty good reasons why somebody might want to do that. You know what I mean? You, you know yeah. what? It's, it's, it's funny because I remember last time we, we, we got into some deep conversation. It's, it's, it's funny. You say, not funny, but it's ironic you say that because we woke <laughs> yeah and yeah. They, would, they would try to label you as a crazy or a conspiracy theorist but guys it's not a conspiracy when they're doing the shit in your face no with blatancy and covid was used by these people to such a degree zero visitation so nobody can see what they're doing right nobody can see what they're doing and they get to blame everything on covid and it literally will stop a medical investigation but they never counted on me they never saw a dude like me coming. I, I got past almost every defense. You, it, it, it could be my girl, it could be my mom, or it could be my friend. I will fight until I can't breathe anymore. That's all there is to it. It's all I know how to do. And I'm not letting these bastards get away with this. No, I think it, I think, I think it, it, it takes more, more people like yourself and like people that, that have a, a drive and a passion just not to accept what they're being told. Like we were all created like, like the, the human body is the most well put together machine ever invented. Ever. Trump's computers in there. You can make yourself sick. You can make yourself have symptoms. You can, you can, you can, you can bring yourself back to health all by the power of the mind. Right. And positive. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just, it's, 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 it's an atrocity that, you know, your, 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 your basic human rights can get violated so easily by a big company or a big, a big business. So blatantly. Yeah. And then your attempt to, to redress it or seek justice can literally be frustrated at every turn. Like the way they prevented me from, because Tuesday and I have a power of attorney. She's gone through this before. We actually have a written power of attorney and they refused to even let me in the door to hand it to them to be re reviewed. So they just didn't let me engage the process. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. How, how, can, how can something like that even happen? Well, you know, I think we all understand it because I don't know if you've ever, dudes that look like me, sometimes, you know, people lock their doors when I cross the street in a crosswalk. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I know what my rights are, but I've been arrested a couple of times where those rights didn't mean shit because they didn't mean shit to the cop. Yeah. 
it has to matter to the people in charge. You that's why we when somebody's going to be appointed to the Supreme Court, we want to know what they think about the law, because if they don't care about it, <laughs> then you ain't going to get a fair shake. Right. These people just once they're entrusted, that's a thing that we actually have to do and trust them. And at some point, it's going to be up to them whether they care about it or not. Right. I, I don't I don't I, I think I think any time. The way things are, are, are the way we see them now, like more so now than any time ever in, in the past, the blatancy, like you, you, you can't, you can't tell me right now it's, it's, it's 940 in California, right? Pacific Standard sure. Time. You can't tell me the sun is out and it's, and it's seven in the morning right now. Right. Cause right. See, I can clearly look up and it's 940. It's nice. Right, 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 right. But that's kind of how this thing goes. Like they will tell you, this is what it is and you have to believe it. Don't use your, your free will or your mind or your brain and think for yourself. We're going to think for you. This is what it is. Just do it. Like I, there's something like disgustingly wrong with that. Dude, you, you just hit the nail on the head. And, and I, here's my example of that. I was able to have FaceTime phone calls with, with, Tuesday while she was in a state of a coma. And as I was talking to her, I started to notice her body reacting, not like motor reflex. She was reacting to me. Mm -hmm. And the first time I saw it, I excitedly was like, I'm thinking like, oh my God, this is a major breakthrough. Everyone. So while I stayed on video call with her, my friend called the hospital, the nurse, you could tell she didn't even get up off her ass to even go walk into a room. She went, it's nothing. It's motor reflex. And I'm like, no, what are you talking about? It's, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm seeing it, sir. It's nothing. There's nothing there and hung up. Wow. And after three more times of me talking to her and, and being able to undeny, the last time I got to video chat with her, she reacted to my voice so obviously that the nurses came in, she picked up the iPad. I, I could see her finger come across the camera. So I think she thought she hung it up and she visibly said in front of me and five other people in the room, medicate her before we put him back in there wow in other words keep her drug so he can't see this shit anymore and then they just decided to stop it he, we're, he she's trying to wake up so bad that we can't let him see that think about that in your head for a minute that's a doctor and a nurse actively preventing a patient from demonstrating recovery to a person who might want to do something about it Wow. Which I mean, you, you, you make the case though. I mean, if the organ harvesting is, is that lucrative, it that's that's so much that the, the incentive for, for 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 it for her her health to fail is is huge. And mm -hmm. there's so much ease with which they can make it fail. Yeah. Like yeah. they can yeah. tell you that they're not gonna remove her feeding tube, but they don't tell you that there's hydration and nutrients, two elements. They can remove one of those. And they're still technically keeping her feeding tube in. Wow. And, and when you're confronted by that the first time, it's so wrong. And it's so like hard to get your head around it. Like the first time the doctor was like, she's going to come off life support. It was like, wait, those words hurt my head. Like, I don't even get that. But when you start to wrap your head around it, you start to realize that as I see it, this isn't just a battle for medical uh, uh, clarity. This is a, a spiritual battle between good and evil. Yeah. Definitely. And and it's real. Yeah. I love the way your mind works, brother. Both of you, but uh, uh, <laughs> I love that. Did you just hit some nails on the head for me, especially with what you just said uh, about trying to make you say the sky is green when we all know it's blue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, just 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 like I don't know, like. So, so this is, this is, this is my thing. So in the past, I'm 43. So I've been living a little bit. So in the past, as far as back as I can remember, even in movies, like it, it, the, the crazy, the conspiracy guy, like, uh, they'll dismiss it as, uh, he's, he's just weird. He's a conspiracy. They, they didn't silence that person necessarily back then. Now with the, with the uh, way social media, social media has exploded globally, everything can be looked at it from so many different angles. So the truth is in there somewhere. Yeah. You know, so now you're seeing 
people who are speaking opposite of what the the the, the agenda is, okay, they still taking their pages. They're 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 silencing them. I Absolutely. mean, if they're if they're crazies and they're conspiracy theorists, and what they're saying is a hundred percent false, why are you so concerned with 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 them voicing their freedom of yeah. speech? Why would you want him to speak? You'd be easily able to prove your own point. Exactly. Let them. Let them. Let them talk themselves into a to 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 being crazy, weird, dumb, uh, conspiracy theorists. Let let them let them hang themselves, so to speak. Like, which they will. Right. If 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 they're wrong. If they're wrong. But if there's some truth there, and you're afraid for people to start saying, "Wait a minute, let me listen to what they're saying." Right. Let's let's investigate and let's let's go down that rabbit hole that this this conspiracy theorist is taking right. us in. Oh, let's see, because there's truths in that. Right. So we we cannot we can't allow people to to be persuaded by what it, what do they call it on social media? Because uh, Instagram does it. They put that little thing on their name. Tag on it, the uh, misinformation thing. Yeah, like says who. Yeah. And, and since when is personal experience misinformation? That's testimony. That part. Yeah. That you part. know, it, 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 uh, it, it's, it's uh, kind of an amazing world in that respect, too, because uh, you have some of the biggest morons in the world with power now mm -hmm. telling you that the sky is green with impunity, like like you, you should be believing them, and they're amazed and aghast when you even want to confront them at all. It's, it's, uh, that's the infuriating thing. Like my brother used to insult me in Klingon because he was a nerd, and <laughs> he, he and his friends would laugh, and I would be like, "Dude, it's not insulting because it's in Klingon." But he didn't accept that, so he actually felt like he was insulting me, and he kind of won. <laughs> wow. And yeah. He, anybody we call a crazy. I'll be honest, backstage at a rock show, the girl that I do not under any circumstances want to be backstage is the one, God forbid, that'll seem decent and let my girlfriend know that I've been getting blowjobs from somebody else. You know what I mean? Like, that's <laughs> the one. We, we ain't going to entertain that one at all. We can't let her speak on the floor at all because mm. there's some truth in that. <laughs> so I know exactly what it looks like. You know what I mean? Right. I know what it looks like because I've done it. And that's the that's the that's the frustrating part. Like, here's my deal. I'm not pro or con anything. I'm right is right, wrong is wrong. Bing. And, and, and I love you. We have to get back to what happened to humanity. Like, yeah, we, it's we it, it, there there is no and, and okay. So I don't want to I don't want to digress too much, but it will tie it in. So a while back during the, the 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 scamdemic or the excuse i'm sorry pandemic uh, <laughs> so you you're talking about the democrats versus the, the versus the republicans and i was talking to somebody the other day and they had brought that up you know if the dems and i said dude there's no such thing these people on the same team it's the same the way, it's the same way race wars were created a long time ago all you have to do is demonize one group of people and continue to put out the narrative that these are bad people. Now, everybody is pointing at those people saying those are the bad people. When I saw a woman on Instagram did a video, oh, my daughter, she's pregnant and her, her uh, husband has gotten COVID and he's trying to something in the hospital and he can't because the non-vaccinated are in there. They all should fucking die. Like it was just so gross and disgusting. I'm like, what happened to humanity? Yeah, no, it was humanity and reasonable intelligence. Yeah. Because so, that statement, I'm vaccinated, but I'm going to need you to be vaccinated to keep me safe. What? Now, here, so here's my, <laughs> I was just trying to figure it out. Hey, if people want to get, if, 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 if those of us that want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated, cool. I shouldn't be mad at somebody who does or does not want to get vaccinated. Because here's the thing that I that I tell people all the time. If I'm vaccinated, why do I care if you're vaccinated or not? Because I'm if right. I'm vaccinated, I'm supposedly safe, right? So what di what difference do it make? I know everyone isn't vaccinated against smallpox, but when we get vaccinated against it, 
That's why we do it so that we don't have to worry. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But we also live through something where scientists changed the definition of words verifiably, like herd immunity. That has nothing to do with a vaccine. That has only to do with infection. A vaccine is a, is a process by which you speed up a natural process of herd immunity. That's all a vaccine is. It's just quickly replicating something that normally happens in nature. I actually went and found the last printed dictionaries, and I'll even grab one right now. Uh, the last dictionaries printed uh, like three years ago, and I looked up the definitions of vaccine, and I looked up the definition of herd immunity. And they're different. <laughs> it's they're a play different. On, it's a play on words. It's a it's a play on words. Like, okay, so one of you know, let's say let's say I remember back when I had 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 bought my house many years ago, right? I was twenty six. I'm young. I, they 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 you know they stick us in a room, and it seems like. My palms are itching. I'm nervous. It's like a thousand pieces of paper that I got to sign. I'm just, right. I'm nervous. So you start, you get to the, you get to the uh, deed of trust, right? And it's just page after page of legal jargon that I, I have, abs I don't even know what the hell they're talking about. All I know is right. on the first page, my name, the residence, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. That's the important <laughs> part. The rest of that stuff is just a bunch of legal jargon that I will probably have to be an attorney to understand fully. Absolutely. Right? So it's a play on words. You, yeah. I mean, if I, if I, if I speak over your head, if you will, and I, and I, and I take a few words and then I make a sharp left turn, you're still going to think you're on the straight. Yeah. You won't notice it. You won't notice it. It's, it's slight. So I'm like, I don't understand how people can't see, they keep moving the goalposts. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I'm and, 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 but we had a willing group of people willing to let them do that. A yeah. small one, but they would shout down the others. I call it all you can drink lemonade. These people try to sell us on all you can drink lemonade. We go, yeah. Then they hand us a glass and pour a little bit in the bottom and go, that's all you can drink. That part. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's all you can drink. And, Hey, I'm going to tell you something off topic, but since the last time we talked, I got a basketball and a football, and I've been more physically active uh, in, <laughs> in the world of sports. Just, just I don't know if that has anything to do with you guys, but it definitely correlated to the last time we spoke. That's you know, awesome, Jesse. Definitely. I think I got awesome. NBA basketball to relive my youth. You're going to stay youthful if you do that. That's, that's the dude. That's the I'm going to stay young forever that way. That's that's the secret. I, I and and I you know, you got to understand. There's no, there's no, there's no money in cures, right? I have no. to. I basically. So I had an epiphany maybe about ten years ago. I'm just thinking. I was driving. I just got mad out of nowhere. I was like, dang man, the American dream really isn't the American dream. It's all a facade. It's a it's it's fake. It's a show. So like at the end of the day, I'm not gonna say all. But because there's some medicine that does help, but I'm just saying to me, it's kind of like, damn, we just want to create dope fiends so we can make That's money. From the rest of their yeah. life. And I don't think you're actually wrong if you were to say that it's a lot or most because it started from such a small group that it only takes one element to get corrupted, that it corrupts everything laterally. And once you get a, a situation where you are encouraging doctors to become corrupt by imposing these COVID measures and you, you bring them once. That's why a gangster makes you kill somebody before you get into the gang because they got to know. They got to know. And once they know that doctors are more, more interested in making 40 grand off putting someone on a ventilator or making 10 grand just by diagnosing them with COVID, they got them. Yep. And it corrupts yep. everything. Yeah. And I, I, I have been personally battling the awful face of its effects. Because they will, like this, active, they'll spend more energy to prevent you from uh, letting someone live than they will just to see if they could. So what, what happens to moral compass? What happens to, you know, you know what I mean? Like I know exactly what you mean, brother. I just, I, I feel like, 
I was I was telling I was talking to somebody the other day, and I was like, dude, I don't I don't see color no more. Like, I mean, I'm born and raised in California. I've lived in the South, but I just don't. If you a good person, by me, yeah. you a good. You'll person. see it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That, that, all that matters. That's Every all situation is situational. I'll judge it by the man, by yep. the person. That part. Yep. Same with the part two, like, sorry, Dante, the part two, like when you hear, oh, so-and-so is a bad person, so-and-so is this, so-and-so is that. I judge a person on what they've shown me. I can't give a flying fuck on what somebody else thinks. Sorry. Hey, that, that dude, absolutely 100%. If, 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 because gossip, right? Yep. Yeah. I tell people all the time. I will, my antennas will be up. My inspector gadget, you know, go, go gadget ears will be on alert if right. you are somebody that I, I believe to be a friend. Now we throw love and we throw friend those terms around so loosely, right? A lot, right? A, a true friend. And I had to explain this to my son. I said, a true friend is someone who is not going to cheerlead your bullshit. Yeah. So if I'm your real friend, I'm going to tell you, nah, dog don't do that that ain't cool and you yeah. get mad at me because you're good you won't get mad at me because you're gonna know you know what i can't even get mad because i respect what he just said because that's my friend and now, if i wasn't and, go ahead and it's coming from the right place you're yeah. saying it not because of anything other than that you love your friend yeah and i think i think a lot of people misinterpret what a friend is they misinterpret what what love is because you got to sh- you got to you got to show somebody with your actions like you know you it, 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 people people especially in this day and age everybody is is looking for like a a pat on the back or a participation trophy or yeah out or you know i i did this for that and and, and, a and medal. Instead, yeah instead of doing something for somebody genuinely so i think the world the world could could speed up could speed up it being becoming better if we said, you know what, we're not going to look at it from a political standpoint. We're not going to look at things from a monetary standpoint more so than we can look at it from a humanity standpoint. Yeah, or a reward standpoint, because yeah. doing the right thing is its own reward. Yeah. And if people looked at it like that, then you wouldn't need recognition. Like the only true charity is anonymous. That's yeah. the only true charity is the a charity that's given anonymously. And you, you ask an important question, where's the humanity? Well, I think the answer is, it's us. It's up to us. The people that we've entrusted are fucked. Yeah. And I'm, with me personally in this situation as I'm going forward with my girl, I'm not gonna take no for an answer when it comes to the humanity. Whether they want to or not, they're gonna provide it. And I hope, that it shows the way for anybody else who might go through this. But my problem is I'm, I'm very blessed. I'm incredibly blessed in what I do in life and the opportunities that I've had and some of the assets that I have at my disposal that I know for a fact most people wouldn't have. They wouldn't have been able to mount the fight that I've mounted. And the idea that somebody would have to sit and eat it while a doctor is telling them that their loved one is gonna die and they know it's not true and they just have to sit there and eat it, that's the most inhumane thing I could think of. Absolutely. Think of how many times that's probably happened to Jesse, which is absolutely crazy, right? Sad. So many, and I've been speaking, do you remember Terry Schiavo? She was a big case, it was like 20 years ago, and the state of Florida ordered that she be taken off life support because her husband was suing, and the family tried to stop it. And basically the state mandated euthanasia for this woman. I've been talking to him because he's an activist now and, and I've become an activist in my own right. But the staggering, staggering statistical information alone is so gross. It makes me understand why some of our doctors are so sympathetic to the Chinese doctors and maybe a little more sympathetic to the Germans in the 30s than we would be comfortable with. I just... I think common sense has to has to reign supreme in a lot of situations now, opposed to making things more complicated than they really need to be. Because at the end of the day, hey man, a, 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 a human life means a lot. Man, I just can't. I just don't understand how 
we, and when I say we, not us individually per se, but as a as a as a as a people, can't seem to find common ground on the love and respect for humanity. And we get caught up in, oh, he's a Democrat, oh, he's a Republican. Yeah. Oh, he's a he's a left winger, oh, he's a right winger. Who I don't give a fuck. I look. Yeah, are they telling the truth? Are they right? That's yeah. all I want to know. Just but 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 the common denominator is right is right and yeah. wrong is wrong. It's, those are basic fundamental things we learn from our parents as kids. My my daddy used to always tell me one thing I can't stand, Dante is a liar and a thief. And as a man, my dad used to say that you're raised yeah. as a man. Hey, your last name and your word. That's what you got. Yep, that's it. And that's all you take with <laughs> yeah. you to the grave. Yeah. So what those are, those are, those are, those are common foundational things that I think a lot of us were raised with, you know, from, from, you know, age 40 and up that yeah. you're, you're raised with those, you know, those are, that's like the, the standard. That's like basic. That's like, but you, you bring up a great point at 40 and under, I think the compass changed. Yeah. 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 And yeah. that's the real problem. The runs that have the wrong compass, We've spent too much time playing these pleasantries like everybody's got an opinion and it needs to be respected. Well, in my opinion, wrong opinions suck and I don't respect them very much. Right. And right opinions should be respected a little bit more. But so there's been too much uh, gentleness on stupidity being tolerated. Yeah. Like absurdity. Mm -hmm. You know, feelings don't really count for much with me. Yeah. Well, and I think this day and age is get, just getting soft, really soft. You know, I, and they're calling out like Eminem now for Eminem's lyrics and shit like that. Like, come on. What you, you know, you got to understand in order in order for an agenda. Right. We all know this to be true. We all know at the end of the day. Media is only going to put out what they want you to see. Yeah. Let's, let's be honest. Like, it's, that's it's, it. Come on, man. So you you still have to. And like I said, I'm not trying to be ultra controversial. We have, this is our podcast. We, we can shoot the shit. We talk in real talk. It's oh, not brother. politically correct. Oh, I'm looking for allies and friends. Hey. It just attempts to be accurate. And that's, that's why I love you. That's just what it is. Like, once again, right is right. Wrong is wrong. You were create. all of us uh, were created. We're X-Men. I yeah. tell people all this time, all, this all the time. And they look at me crazy like I'm tripping. No, God created everybody. God, higher power, Yahshua, whoever. A it miraculous is. robot is what we are. Yeah. So we're all praying to the same higher power, I believe. You know. Anyway, as I was saying, we're all created with innate abilities. Right. Um, your 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 job in life is to find out what that superpower is, and once yeah. you find out what it is, you're supposed to hone it. You're supposed to and use it for God. It. Man, and your gift back to him is maxing it out and sharing it with as many people as possible. So with that said, I think a lot of times in the world, I think 90 to 95 percent of the population live mundane, unfulfilled, unpromised lives because they they never figure out what the superpower is and they just accept mediocrity. And, and, and they don't even try to look. No, and then, and then you got guys, you got people, not the guys and gals, you got people that are very extremely talented in the superpower that they know that they have, but they want to go be a singer and they can't hold a note to save their life. They bang right. their head trying to do something that they're not naturally talented in versus the superpower right. God blessed you with. So, and then they refuse to accept that reality. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why, why do I, if, if I'm, I, I, I was gifted with a pretty sharp mind and athletic ability. So I knew very, very early on how I was going to obtain, you know, get to and be able to, you know, navigate my way through my life. I used right. those sports because I figured out that was one of my superpowers. Right. So, you recognized it. That's, I mean, at the end of the day, man, I just feel like, the world is a stage, it's a show, and it's, it's gotten out of hand and we gotten away from humanity and common sense. Now it's up to us, the people like us, to close that curtain. Got to. And start a new show because I'm telling you, 
I love my fellow man for whatever that means in a corny way. I like people. I, I, if I meet someone who's cool, I, I tend to like them. And I want everyone to be able to walk into a hospital at the very least on my tax dollar and have the oath that the doctors have taken be trustworthy, bare minimum. Absolutely. And, and I'm not willing for any of my brothers and sisters, even the ones I don't know, to have to face what I'm going through right now. I'm just not. No, I commend you, brother. Um, in 2016, I, I watched my mom die in front of me. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, brother. She got she got sick with stage four colon cancer, like out the blue, seemed like. And she didn't she didn't tell me and my my brother and sister like I, what I think happened when she went to the doctor. They told her, you know, Mrs. Mars, you got stage four colon metastasized colon cancer. Um, we'll do chemo, but that's about all we can do. It's, it's pretty aggressive and you probably got a year. I think that's what they told my mom, but her being the person she was, she didn't want us to, to like worry. Yeah. Worry and be down. So she, I think she, she kept that, you know, with HIPAA laws and things of that nature. She didn't have to tell us shit. So. And she trusted the doctors. Yep. So I, I mean, I watched that eat through my mom like Pac-Man, but it, it, when you, when you were earlier talking about the situation that you got going on, it just made me think like, damn, man. Cause I, I literally watched her soul leave her body. Yeah. And it's, it's, I don't, I don't wish that on nobody, but it's just, it's, it's, you know, her eyes were dilated, you know, she was at hospice at, you know, downstairs at her house. And like, you know, at that point, she's look she 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 pulls me closer to her but her eye like she's she's in there but she's leaving if that makes sense yeah she's in the process i know exactly what you mean by yeah. and man i that's some that's some that's some man that's some hard shit to 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 go through and 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 i had to go through that and i the experience was like surreal because that's absolutely your, you know what i'm saying you know that's your that's your parent. You've been knowing that that woman or or your dad that man yeah. the whole life. You think they're forever. You think they're yeah. forever. Yeah, and it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a weird, crazy feeling, and uh, it's like you you're you're trying to think like, damn, they got to be able to do something. <laughs> you know, right. it's a helpless feeling at that. But yeah, you so, know, I'm gonna let me tell you something about COVID. When I brought Tuesday to the hospital, you know they always ask you a couple questions to try to determine what caused the problem. So she was in cardiac arrest. Their first two questions were, is it drugs? Which you would expect. The second question, has she been vaccinated within three days? So that tells me that as far as this hospital goes, the number two most common reason people were coming into the hospital for cardiac arrest was vaccinated. being vaccinated within three days. Wow. Just a little inferential statistic there. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see why that's not being reported more than because I've, I've been. I hearing, can't imagine. I'm here. I've been hearing it a lot. And that's like the med at the emergency room level. You can pretty much at least trust that those questions they ask you are accurate. The, the, that's what they want to know. It's right, based right. on the experience that they're having. And the experience they're having is that the number two most common reason for a cardiac arrest is being vaccinated within three days. I, I, I think that's critically important. Yeah. I think it's important to know that when Spotify pulls the uh, uh, Neil Young catalog, that the person who owns Spotify is one of the former chiefs of Moderna. Mm. I think that's important. That pissed me off, by the way, that they pulled his catalog. You want to know something insidious about that? That bastard, he, he tries to look like he's doing something right. He had already sold that catalog to a publishing company, the one that was peopled by uh, former executives of Pfizer and Moderna. He had already sold that catalog, so he didn't benefit or lose anything financially. It didn't mean anything to him for them to remove that catalog. Huh, I didn't know that. So that's why he wrote that that letter that he pu published. It's a letter to his attorneys asking them to remove it because he had no say. Wow, that's crazy. So it's just theatrics. Yep. 
just theatrics, man. They they have to they have to they have to show you what they want you to see. Yeah, and and sometimes they're barely. Some, they're trying to make us believe in the reality of a of a science fiction movie using fifties era special effects. Yeah, right. It's like, come on, dude! I can see that's a paper plate. It's not a spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I was, hey, <laughs> I was watching uh, Christine last night for the umpteenth time. I love that movie, dude. Yeah, watching it, watching it in twenty twenty two versus when I was a kid and first seen it, way different. It is, but you realize that back then it was more character driven. Yeah. Like I just rewatched the first Alien. You only see the monster Ooh. like a fraction of a second. Right. Everything I else is the character driven shit. Dude, I, I haven't love seen that movie, movie in I forever. Movie. I'm the a, one I'm... movie, I don't want to get too far off topic. The one movie that fucked me up. So I was about eight or nine and my sister rented me because she's got six years on me. She rented me and my best friend, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh -huh. first one. And I was like eight or nine. And I'm sorry, that movie fucked me up. I couldn't sleep for days. Hey, I'm a horror movie buff, right? So I, 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 I got so many DVDs and obviously we don't use DVDs as much anymore. But when I was a kid, like in the 80s, my aunt used to have a shitload of VHS. Like you remember back in the day, you can go to your, your before Blockbuster got real big, you go to your mom and pop. Yeah, video, your local one. Yeah, your video store. And they had all the shit, right? So <laughs> I don't want to incriminate people, but uh, two VCRs, you get, the, you get the cord, and then you can right. record them. We, were, we would record them. So we had a shitload of movies on VHS. And what we would do is, me, my brother, and my cousin, we would stay up. We like eight, nine, 10 years old. We watch horror movies. I'm talking about Halloween. I'm, I'm a huge Michael Myers fan. The Texas, right. the Leatherface is iconic. Mm -hmm. Michael Myers, iconic. And the, the crazy part is, this is when I fell in love with Jamie Lee Curtis, right? Right. Oh, dude, she was so hot back then. <laughs> so, original Scream Queen, right? Yeah. So, right. Um, watching those movies back then, I'm talking about you're petrified. Like, I had a, yeah. the first time I saw a child's play, right? I had a ventriloquist doll, a howdy doody ventriloquist doll. <laughs> so I would hang it by the string on my closet door. After I seen that movie, oh, I was that. sitting in my bed and I'm looking Chuck. at this damn uh, Chuck, uh, uh, howdy doody ventriloquist doll. I got so scared, I jumped up <laughs> and threw him in the closet and put hella blankets on top of it. Yeah, don't look at me. Man, I see it. Nice. I see I'm it. I'm a Chucky fanatic, dude. I'm going to send you something, too, because I'm a horror fanatic, too. But I like classic horror. Yeah. I don't like movies like Hostel or shit like that. That's death porn to me. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just gratuitous. I even think Quentin Tarantino makes death porn. I mean, it seems like that son of a bitch likes like vindictive rape a lot because he meticulously recreates it in his films, dude. I mean, like. You must be into something to recreate it with meticulous accuracy. Hey, yeah. he's, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Quentin Tarantino. I was watching uh, Desperate, was it, is it Desperado with uh, Antonio okay. Banderas? Antonio Banderas. With that movie the, rules. Yes. I was watching that the other night too. I, it, to go back, not to get too far off topic, but to go back to what you said, watching the originals now, I'm like, I was scared of that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. Like, what? Yeah. That sucks. Like yeah. that, that's not scary. That's funny. But then when they remake them, you like technology has because the, the the newer like they they've redone Halloween two or three times, yeah. and then uh, Text Chainsaw has been redone. And yeah, I'm, the new Leatherface is a friend of mine. Yeah. Hey. Are you serious? Yeah, Andrew Bernarski. Andrew Bernarski. He's a friend of mine. Wow. He's funny, dude. That's awesome. He's giant too. He's like. He's like real Leatherface. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Jesse, what did you think of uh, Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween? I like that one. I like it, and I'll also see. I, I I'm a big fan of Rob Zombie, but I'll I'll point this out. It's it's the highest grossing of all the franchise series, and he loves horror films. So when he does it, you know he's trying to respect the original at least. Yeah, and 
deliver an addition to it. I'm very interested in his version of the Munsters. Yeah, I agree. Because I've seen the pictures and he gave grandpa a mustache and I'm very interested in that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, so like, so, so that was my big thing, right? So like, I, like I said, I'm a horror movie buff. So when they did the, the remake of Friday the 13th, it was little, little uh, details, right? So Jason Voorhees never really ran. Like he was right. more like a, a big clumsy walk. He's walking. You can run as fast as you can. He's going to catch you and kill you. Right. Yeah. So he took, when he, I can't, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a portion in the film where he actually has an ax and he takes like four or five bursts, like running steps and he throws it little details like that in the remakes is like, will make you scared because yeah. man, okay, this big clumsy dude, like, like it was just different now. And I'm like, damn, that's, that's dope. Yeah. And right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I like to see that shit. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, man, there's something wrong with me. Ever since I was a little kid, I like horror movies. Have you seen Mandy? Uh -oh. wrong turn. Mandy is the greatest horror movie I've seen in 10 years. It's with Nicolas Cage. It's psychedelic and it's 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 in this like it exists in a in a fairy tale world kind of but it's it's every it he lives in Crystal Lake and it's like every horror movie combined like hometown. Okay. And he has a girlfriend who's murdered by this cult and he it's a vengeance tale. But it's fucking insanely good and it's old-fashioned horror it tributes a lot of horror films okay. it and it's also got this incredible soundtrack but it's like one of nicholas cage's best roles nice uh, i just wrote it down i'm definitely gonna Man, check it out is it gotta see it so yeah this is this is another thing that is so iconic the scores right so, halloween john carpenter is a is, man He's a genius, dude. Yep. <laughs> Man, you hear that shit, you better run. <laughs> or if you hear, <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. so let, let me ask a question. Why does the black person always get killed before the credits even start rolling? <laughs> in, every, in every horror movie. <laughs> South Park. South Park does a great, a great uh, parody of that when the Canadians are about to attack and, and the white general brings in the all black brigade and he starts operation human shield. It's like <laughs> begin operation human shield. It's like, Oh dude. But I, yeah, actually that is a reasonable question. It's it, a reasonable it, it, question, even independent of, of the norms of, of, you know, any sort of traditional racism. Like why would that be? Because it's true. Every, yeah. every, every movie, like even going back to when they, they, they fucked up the Friday the 13th and they start doing Jason goes to New York. Uh, yeah. Jason on a, 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 a spaceship, like a spooky so, spaceship. Yeah. The scene where they're, they're in New York and the, and the, and the, and the black guy can box pretty well. And he's on top of the, the rooftop and he's, he getting, he's trying to whoop Jason's ass and then. All of a sudden, Jason punch him one time and knock his head off. And I'm just, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm just like, why can't the the black guy be the survivor or the black girl be the survivor at the end of the movie? Yeah, why can't they just live? They don't even have to be in the movie. But can we just know that they are going to keep going? Yeah. Or, or when you hear hear those noises, is that you? And go investigate. No, if I hear that noise, I'm out of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I should hide. I'm going to go hide in there with all the hanging knives. I'm going to go to the spooky old shed in the back of the house. I'm, gonna hey. behind the <laughs> I'm not going to oh, hide fuck. in my closet. No, or under my bed. Hey, now, listen. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre might be the most... It might be the most scary because it seems like it could be the most real, right? Yeah, absolutely. You, when you have, you, you, you know, all those people... Can we take the uh the shortcut? Oh yeah, you they stop at an old raggedy gas station. Yeah. And they want to take a shortcut through Texas. And then well, you go that road down there. And it's this one ass house, no other houses around. And the scariest shit is when uh one of the teenagers kind of finds themselves in the house 
they're going to somebody's house hello hello and then remember leatherface was always behind that door because he was back right. there cutting people up putting people on them uh hangers and things like that and then it had a little peephole remember and then yeah walking around and then next thing you know the door opened hella fast and this huge ass man with this 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 human face on him <laughs> comes out and grabs you this is it's something so scary and so so surreal like not surreal but just i don't i don't know i think your imagination to the just, audience because we know that he's behind there right and it still scares us right but yeah. but it seemed like that shit can really happen like because it's it loosely works. based on some some true events in in real yeah, game yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't he like in west yeah. somewhere yeah he uh he he did make a skin suit out of people and danced under the moonlight and then he fed piece, pieces of the victims he would cut it up and he would give it to his neighbors as a side of beef wow where's the, that's where's, insane i mean that's some weird shit where's the humanity yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we, yeah. There, there's a question for the ages right there. I don't know yeah. how you guys feel about legal firearms, but I made my first gun and I'm very happy about it. Let's see it. Yeah, check it out. Mm. Holy shit. Hold on, Jesse. You got to say something, show it, because then the camera will be on you. We're waiting for yeah. Jason. I made it. We're waiting. I'm I'm sitting here waiting for Jason and Leatherface. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. But that's wow. I, I needed something to occupy my time the last couple of months. Absolutely. And having to mill out and machine metal parts will focus you. Yeah. Jesse, I was gonna ask you that. Um, not to get in too personal, um, but I was gonna ask, you know, what have you been doing to help yourself get through the situation with Tuesday? Well. A few things I will say first, though, for me, this is something that I, this is my duty and it's just the way it is. So I, it's, I've never my whole life ever had a problem doing something that is good, but I decided to, I pour myself into my music and uh, I've been, I am very blessed to have beautiful friends. So I've been surrounded by beautiful friends, but I decided first that I was going to work on covers that I hated just to keep myself distracted. Why don't I record some songs that I think suck and see what happens? I'll just try that. And I liked one of them. And then um, I've been writing music and uh, really, and we're, we're getting ready to go on tour in two weeks. Um, we're going to go on a, a, a one and a half month tour and I'm testifying on mine and Tuesday's behalf at the French court for the uh, trial against the uh, Bataclan attackers. Okay. I, I did see your, your tour was coming up um, and I was hoping to God you were coming to Canada, which I don't think you are. We are when we come back. And I've also been focused on my best friend and I'm very glad that he's gotten full custody of all of his children. Yeah, yeah that's a blessing for sure. For well, me, it's a good thing when, when, some, when someone I love is in trouble or they need help, and I'm able to do it, that's the coolest and most, I know this might even sound weird, but the past two months, as hard as they've been, my life has never had more meaning than at any other time in my life. The most meaningful things that I've ever done have been this, the actions undertaken on behalf of Tuesday. I, if I were to die right now, I would feel like I have been doing the right thing for the past two months with such meaning that I don't think I could feel it if I graduated from Harvard. I, I'm grateful that Tuesday's the kind of girl that she is that's inspired this in me. And I'm grateful that I've been able to undertake something. That, like I said, it's given my life more meaning than anything else I've ever done. Yeah, I think that's the key. Um, <laughs> when, it's something, when it's something that we talk about humanity, right? And as men, I know we often don't. I know, especially in the in the in the in the, the men of color, we don't really, you know, it's it's a hard thing for us to 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 be open and to be transparent right. with other men about your emotional state or your. I know what you mean, right? So, 
this is this shit is so and we and we gonna grow this podcast man like it started on the, like almost on a fluke but it's it, it got some traction and what what i would like to see is that we we have more um sessions or podcasts that we do that covers just like how we doing right now we talking about right. some shit that's it's, it's nuggets and you know we're it's like we're it's like a pot of gumbo and people can, right and and pull from it and we i think i think when we talk about humanity and moral compass and stuff you just got to have more real uncut raw undulterated real conversations and absolutely you have to pose questions that make people uncomfortable because in order to grow you know we talk about women you know uh you got to go through something to get something so you know you go through 38 to 40 weeks of pregnancy as a woman, your nose get big, you have crazy cravings, you feel unattractive, you get yeah. fat, you feel ugly, unwanted. Yeah. Awesome. But you go through all that shit, then you go through labor and it's pain, right? But something so beautiful, a life comes from all that, like all that adversity that they face, right? So we just, we, we, we have to be able to put in uncomfortable situations in order to grow. And I think the world, really can benefit from just real conversation man like it does let's let's not let's not talk about like this is the problem i have right you alluded to it earlier when you talked about we 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 don't we like everybody has an opinion and every everything right. is so touchy every subject yeah. is to me now real is fake and fake is real yeah I, it's so true so true and it's like, I was reading this thing about Texas, like, wait a minute. So they're going to take the whole civil rights stuff out of curriculum? Like, how did, like, it never existed. Yeah, well, that's crazy. But it's like, you, that's history. That has to be, like, we can't pick and choose and dictate history. Like, no. shit, shit really happened. It need to, so, so it won't repeat itself, right? Precisely. So we, so we have to learn from these these things, good, bad, or indifferent, right? And I just feel like the world is just in such a terrible place right now because everybody has a voice but don't have a voice, if that makes sense. Right. Well, they're able to speak, but it doesn't matter. It's in the den of all the other voices. Right. And we should know there should no person or entity or group of people should be in charge to the point where they can dictate life what's, what's life and what's real and what's not right like real is real right. you know and, and you know it, it would be easy to get hopeless or in despair but i will say that as soon as this fight i had to undertake this fight people came to my aid beautiful people the whole world's uh like supported us we're talking about this now that gives me great hope because the three of us in different parts of the world are having a discussion where we are seeing things a lot in the same way. Mm -hmm. Well, you, 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 you know, I mean, if it looked like a duck, walk like a duck and quack like a duck, then damn it, it must be a duck. Right. So, yeah. I mean, we, we not gonna call a duck a platypus. It's clearly no. a duck. My so, grandpa used to say, if it looks like an Indian and smells like an Indian, it ain't John Wayne. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, it, it is what it is. And I think, you know, I was, I was telling um, some of my students, I said, well, here's the thing with, with, with racism. Racism isn't real. And people looking at me like, huh, what are you doing? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's really not. It's a socially learned behavior. So yeah. I take a, 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 a three-year-old white kid. I take a three-year-old black kid. I take a three-year-old Latino kid, an Asian kid. And they're all in the sandbox playing, right? Those kids are going to love each other. That's my friend. Yep. Until some ignorant ass and adult says, don't play with that such and such. Don't play with That's that. That's exactly that. right. That's a socially learned behavior. It's not real. It's generated. It's created. Yes. It's a construct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A social construct. Right. So with that said, it goes back to what's right is right. What's wrong is right. right. Humanity. That right there, that little piece that we that i just said that's humanity if if there's if if it's not polluted with the negative energy 
it will be successful as a good moral compass. Right? Absolutely. Is wrong is wrong. So once again, let's have a conversation. Why we can never have the conversations so we can come to a resolution. Yeah. And and but then what gives me hope is that I know you're a dad. Yep. Right? Yep. You're right. And I, I'm a dad. My son's 22. And I raised him strictly like this. Gives me a little hope. Yeah, for sure. That's the, that's the positive thing of it. It's just, damn, we need more people to get on this boat because it's so, it's, so di- it's so divisive right now. Right. And, and that was my main thing. Like, hey, people should have a choice. You, you, we, we don't, we, we here in the, here in North America, we don't, we, for as long as I've been living anyway, we, it's supposed to be, you know, the, the greatest land, you know, freedom, right. opportunity, you know, it's a, it's a place where people from other places that are, 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 are like third world countries where there's like dictatorship and it's just, it's, it's not cool where people can come here and, and live that quote unquote, that American dream. It's like, we have to sustain that. We have to support that. We can't let it's that secure. Die. You gotta secure it. Cause if you, cause if you don't, I mean, it's going to be nothing. It's going to be nothing. And, I, and, 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 and I'm really, man, that, 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 the back of that Bible is starting to come to fruition. Oh my gosh, boy, <laughs> dude, like, like, come on. Like where I'm like, where my grandma used to say, son, you better. And I'd be like, whatever. And now I'm like, Oh dude. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. And so, and so the, the other thing I, I, cause I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm an outside the box thinker. So I'm, I'm looking at some, you know, money, right. Dollar bills, $10 bills, any, any paper currency. And I know here in the U S it says in God, we trust. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of decisions and a lot, a lot of things that are taking place right now has have nothing to do with God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So in fact, it, the opposite, the exactly. opposite. Exactly. So I'm just, I just pay attention to a lot of little things and I'm just, it's, I'm curious to see how we can say that on one hand, but our actions are so opposite to that. Yeah. The ultimate in hypocrisy. Man. Yeah. But that's when you have people that are do as I say, not as I do kind of leadership. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just, I, it got to be for the people and by the people. It got, it has to get back to the, to the, to the foundation. It must. I think yeah. we deviated too far away from what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. I think we deviated too far away from, you know, we, nobody should, nobody can play the higher power here on earth. Nobody right. can play God. You're not in charge of, you know, making decisions for another person, another human, and a group of people. Right. It should, it should, it should be, you know, we all have free will and a free mind. So we should, I, I think we have to cultivate that again. We got to get back to that because if not, it's, it's going down fast. And, it, mm-hmm. and, it, and like I said, it's, it's turning into when I, 2020 really, I learned a lot. Like I, it, it really, it really kind of supported what I always thought. Like, damn, right. this, you could just create, like, it was like creating a race war, but we were using yeah. vaccinated versus unvaccinated. We're going Republicans versus Democrats. And then I, I'm like, well, you know, I know how politics work. They all in the yeah. same, on the same team. It's yeah, just, you're it's all from like, Washington. It's just like lawyers, right? And I, and I really didn't understand this until I was going through my divorce, right? So, the lawyers aren't adversaries. They're, they're, it's the people they they're represent. Friends. Yeah, yeah. It's the people they represent who are the adversaries. And we subconsciously think, okay, yeah, my lawyer who I'm paying to represent me is on my team and they're gonna, you know, have disdain or dislike or 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 you know for the for the other person and their lawyer. No, 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 no. That's you two people that are represented by those people who probably go to lunch together. Yeah, they're, they're just going to like uh, speak the words. And they're running up the bag on you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Check well, let's on keep a lot bag. of hours that they didn't yeah. need to be spending, dude. <laughs> so it's yeah. crazy how this whole the, 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 the construct works, but 
I don't know, man. Hopefully we can have enough people. I think one thing I do think, I think um, going through the pandemic stuff brought a lot of people to closer together too. I, I do too. Mm-hmm. I, I absolutely believe that. And it, it revealed a lot of bullshit that a lot of people now can't deny and is out there. And I think, yeah. I think the powers that be are playing a mind game of like, you know that scene in Pee Wee's Big Adventure where there, he knocks down the bike? I say we kill him. I say we hang him, then we kill him. I say we let him go. Right. They're kind of doing a version of that, like nothing to see here, folks. Just keep back to normal. But it's too yeah. late. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and definitely. they know that. That's why it's such a clown show. Yeah. One thing I wanted to say, Jesse, was uh, you and I were texting, must have been October, November-ish, and my mom had just been diagnosed with tongue cancer. And you, thank you. And it's been working. And I wanted to get into that. Um, you had, uh, had asked for my mom's name and said you would pray for her. And I told my mom that, and it made her smile and she doesn't even know who you are. And, uh, I just told her who you were and you, you know, we're the lead singer of a band, a rock band and all this stuff. And I think your prayers have, have been working. And I just wanted to say, thank you for that. It meant a lot to oh. me. And it meant even more that you, you know, cared to know my mom's name and uh you know thank you i really appreciate well, that if you're, gonna, if you're gonna appeal for someone to the creator it helps to know their name you know what i mean yeah and uh but i i i always do that when i say it and my mother runs a prayer group and because it was your mom it's special to me so i i told my mom as well and she got her prayer group on it awesome thank you i really appreciate that it's meant oh, so man, much to me. You. thank you for even telling me <laughs> humanity so right here, uh, an example. We're doing it right now, buddy. Yeah. So you mentioned that you're coming up to Canada. Any chance it's either Vancouver or Victoria? Oh, yeah. It's 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 every chance. I always come to... Uh, well, you know, as I've told you, I used to hitchhike, hitchhike up to the Swanson Ferry every summer <laughs> and go to Victoria. So it's all... I mean, Vancouver is always typically where we start. Okay, perfect. And you'll be I'm my a- personal guest. Thank you, sir. Because uh, I'm 100 percent going to be there. That see, the last time I saw you is where this T-shirt came from. You recognize that, obviously. Oh yeah. Yes, oh yeah. Sir. So, so um, what are what are the dates? Um, we haven't set them in stone, but it'll be after June 1st. But I, if anyone is going to be in the Austin, Texas area, we're playing a festival there. Okay. I wish I just saw your advertisement for that on Instagram, and I wish I was there. I wish I could but go. I'm bit. also going to be doing these private or like smaller targeted just where I show up and sing crooner songs. So I'll, I'll let you guys know when I do that. That'd be wicked. That'd be wicked. And watch um, my karaoke on Instagram. I do it every day. <laughs> I watch Jesse. I watch. I try and talk to you. <laughs> I try. I try and say something when you're on there. Do we have you for a couple more minutes, Jesse, or do you have to get going? I'm going to have to get going soon, but you got me for a couple more minutes. A couple more minutes. Okay uh what annoys you the most about the music industry oh that's a good one because that's a big one but i am annoyed by the i mean it's kind of a cliche but there's a whole lot of people who aren't really what they're purporting to be like you look at me i'm a rock and roller that's what i am that's what i do and i hate it when people come here and act like they're trying to save whales in the world but all they really care about is their own damn face Mm -hmm. That's yep. the biggest problem. It's it's where all the heart of all the bullshit, the heart of all the phoniness, the pretense. I mean, almost any political issue right now that a celebrity is undertaking is probably because somewhere back there they're getting sponsorship for something or they're getting money. It's disingenuous. Yeah. Okay. Two more questions. If you could change anything about the music industry, what would it be? What would it be? Well, if I could change anything about the music industry, it would be uh, how record sales are tabulated. So I would be the only one with gold and platinum records. I mean, if I could change anything, I would be the only one winning. But um, uh, if it comes down to like the, I would change uh, the manner in which artists are selected because they have to conform too much before they're able to get any success. And I think freedom of speech is supposed to be our God here in the music industry. And yeah. If you are considering what someone's saying, you're not believing in freedom of speech. And what I would really like to see is more mutual support for people who are actually different. I think I think you need to give the artist back control. Yeah. yeah. And you need an artist that can control too, if they're given the control. Because yeah. you've got a lot of artists who think they're kids and they're used to getting away with all kinds of shit. And <laughs> I mean very the- hookers and shit like that. From, from the standpoint of 
the art form. I got friends that's in the music business. Yep. And you, you give artists back control. Like yeah. I, I'm a I'm a huge Prince fan, Morris Day in the Time, Michael Jack. Like M- Michael, because I grew up, you know, as a kid at the height of Michael's shit. Right, I had the Thriller jacket as a kid. Like the dude was not a a kook. He was not crazy. He was actually very bright. There are some interviews that I recently seen where he was like, "Yeah, you know, well, I think I made a smart decision because you know, with Sony, I mean, like, and I'm like, dude, actually." had it going yeah. on here he was on his shit so was prince and i think you need to as an artist prince even more so yeah i think as an artist man they need to get the control back because it's mm-hmm. their art <laughs> and yeah and I, I that's what we're saying you if we allowed artists to make the art and we respected it on its own terms then it would be more free and open when people don't feel like they have to cover something up they don't mm-hmm. and yeah. We used to, in the 80s, for example, people would go support another artist who they honestly didn't even like because they had a right to make their art. Right. And now right. you have artists. I mean, there were people who were just within proximity to the January 6th uh, Washington, D.C. That, that got kicked off their labels. They didn't even do anything. They were just close by. And that's, that's, that's tyranny. Yeah. That's a, that's a conforming action. That's like saying uh, you'll lose your whole livelihood if you're just near something we don't like. Yeah. That's yeah. not freedom. No, not at all. That's all right, guys. Respect. No, not at all. One thought before my last question is thanks, guys, for making this one hell of a show. The edit tonight is going to be so this. easy. I'm going to be able to put a start and an end on it and link it together and it's going to go up and we'll be on youtube tonight so thank you for that i really appreciate it last question for everybody here if you could go for dinner with anyone dead or alive who would it be dante you're first tupac or malcolm x or huey p newton Ooh, wow i would go frederick douglas thomas jefferson or james brown Ooh. hmm Hmm. I got a picture of me getting tackled by James Brown security when I'm 19 years old because I'd waited for three hours backstage of a show that he played. And yeah. when he came out, I just couldn't help it. And I went, James, and I started running. And they were like, we got a crazy white boy. Tackle him now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice list. Oh, All right. Yours, dude. Tupac. What about you, buddy? Tupac, Freddie Mercury, or Ronald Reagan? Ooh. Ooh. Hey. Ooh, you got me on the Reagan, but I met Reagan, Reagan? twice. So, what did about, you? What about Abraham Lincoln? That would be ooh, yeah, yeah. That, I figured yeah. if I ate dinner with Frederick Douglass, I'd get to know all about Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, there you go, there you go. All right, Jesse, um, thank you so much for coming on again. And I uh, need it I, tonight, you guys. I love your brains, and I love you guys. And I needed it. And I really appreciate you even going out of your way to invite me on. It means a lot to me. And I really needed this. No, Thanks, you, Jesse. One of the, you one of the best. Like uh, me and Ryan talked about it last time. I said, we got to get him on again. You and what was the the, the guy we, uh from, uh, was it Compton? The, uh, oh, uh, we had DJ Yella. We had DJ Yella. Really? Like three DJ, months ago, yeah. No, Yella, Yella was, so look, top top three. What was the, the, the fighter, the UFC fighter? Oh, uh, Pat Militich. Hey, wow. We, we, we've had, and you, you, Yella, and Milovic, and, and it was another, it was one more fighter. We, get, we can continue to. Brandon Glatton. You. Brandon Glatton, the boxer. Yes. Dude, we had DJ Yella, and it was freaking amazing, dude. He went through the whole start of NWA. He went through, you know, what wasn't right in the movie. He was, yeah, it was a really good podcast. There wasn't, there was a lot not right with the movie. There was a lot not right with the movie. You're right. Yeah, but definitely, Jesse, if you're ever bored on tour, check out Inside the Minds podcast with DJ Yella. I'll even send you the link on. I'll text it to you later on. Check it out. It was it was good. It was very when good. When I'm doing karaoke tonight, I'll have it on in the background and I'll be constantly go. talking about it. And I'm going to be watching that tonight. I'm going to watch that tonight, brother. Okay. I'll say hi. It's the best. Th- Jesse, I hope that we can do this for a third time in a couple months. Anytime really you want can. me. I'm, anytime on any subject, I'm always there for you. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. I really appreciate your time. Indeed. Thank you, guys. Both of you. Good good night, brother. Good night, Dante. Good night, night, brother. There you go, Mr. Marsh.
Yeah. You the know, I, I, I like the, I like the, I like the, the, uh, the, 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 just, just the open conversation. It's more, it's more yeah. uh, genuine and it flows better. It was a hell of a conversation, dude. And I knew that, uh, I knew what we were going to get, you know, I knew what we were going to get with Jesse. Uh, and I really wanted him to talk about the situation on Tuesday because I know there's a lot to say about that and uh, get some clarity of, of what's going on. And uh, I hope everything works out. And it sounds like she's doing better, but um, she's still in the hospital. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's a pretty tough situation. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'm still trying to get Mike Edom on here. but <laughs> so, so I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna reach. I'm gonna reach out to some more people and get some and get some guys on here. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna try to get RP on here, man. If he, you know, we can we can shoot. We got some. We got, eh, you know, we got some. Yeah. stories. we got some stories. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. The thing with uh, Brandon Glanton too is, don't forget that. Uh, well, number one, he said he was going to talk to us right after uh, one of his fights, like it's the second he got out of the ring, and he hasn't actually scheduled a fight since he fought a Pochi. So I don't know what's going on there. It's getting close to a year and a half, two years now since he's been in a fight. Yeah. So hopefully man, soon. I, man, I, I, man, I want to get, there's a couple guys, a couple of my friends I would love to get on here, but it's going to be tough. Mm-hmm. I want to get Andre Ward on here, man. But Yes. He, yes. I see, I see Andre Ward on every Friday, what, Friday, Saturday on TV. That's a hell of a hell of a schedule to contend with, by the way. I don't know if he can pull that one off. Right. So I mean, he just a just a genuine good dude, man. Like, you know, got you, 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 me. I root for guys like that, and and then I'm biased because he's he's you know an Oakland native, and I've known him for better parts of twenty years. Just a good dude. Yeah. So very knowledgeable. Yep. Guys like that, you you know, I, for my selfish reasons, I wish he would have kept fighting, but. He left with all his mentals intact, yeah. you know, yeah. and and, and yeah. still able to, you know, do his thing without sacrificing his family. He's a good family dude. So that's, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm extremely proud of me, and he and he he represented from for Oakland real well. So definitely. But yeah, man, we gotta we gotta pick up the steam. How is your class schedule? Uh, so in the so we've got about two weeks left of this semester. And then I'll have a, a two or three week break. And then I've got two classes in the spring semester that I'm enrolled in and possibly one in the summer. And then September's full schedule again. So I will have more extra time coming up. So it's um it's spring. So we're doing spring ball at the JC. So it, it, I'll have a little more time. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and try to get the, if I got to hear back and see if I'm going to go up to Regina, the guest coach, but I think I'm gonna try to make. I need to see the schedule and try to get up to Vancouver. Yeah, early June. See if I can pull that off. Yeah, we should. Yeah, you should try and see that about June. I I know my uh, my bio mom's coming from Calgary sometime this summer. Yeah, and has made me promise that um, I'm gonna be around. So, I think and that's I, August. I, I definitely let definitely let you know because. Um, if I do, which I'm leaning towards, it'll be June. It'll be okay. early summer because we'll, you know, we get, we our season of kick off September. Yeah, we'll, we'll be in the thick of things in August. So June, June, no later than July, I'll probably be ideal. Okay, so sounds I'm, good to me, brother. You know, I'm gonna uh, tap in with all my guys. I gotta hit Carl Kid up and then see if we can all make that make that trip because it'll be it it'll be much much better if we can uh, 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 you know more than a handful of us could get up there yeah Indeed. definitely it'll be fun times i just want to say dante i'm definitely blessed to have you as my co-host on this you bring so much to this podcast man and your knowledge and uh, just how you present your present yourself and how you talk is just amazing dude and i just you know thank you i, I couldn't do any of this without you man so, listen i appreciate you because like i said it started from i didn't i didn't foresee none of this happen. i I just like communicating and talking with genuine people, man. Like it don't have to be all this, 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 uh, this clout chasing shit. You know, you, you hit me. I'm like, okay, man, I'm gonna squeeze in. I'm gonna get it done. Like, yeah. 
is we just put it together and that and, and, and like i said when you have more genuine conversations and you and you talk about uncomfortable things i think there's a lot of growth that can come from that yeah instead of us you know staying on the status quo and dancing around shit and i mean we're not gonna we know how to you know try to try to do it in a in a in the best way fashion possible without offending or being too overly opinionated but mm -hmm. i think we got to get back to everybody has an opinion that doesn't make you right or wrong but everybody has a voice and everybody should be given the opportunity to be heard so yep. I th that's kind of how i envision this moving forward just being a just like the, the pivot or or the you know the the podcast with a uh chad um uh who is that uh channing crowder fred taylor that the athlete podcast it's just a yep. dope podcast and it's real conversation it's not it, it, it's not so scripted yeah that's how it need to be because you know more than an athlete more than a, a musician more than a, a celebrity still a, yep. still a person with you know feelings thoughts emotions and your voice counts. It goes back to that yeah. when that uh, reporter or that news anchor said, you know, LeBron should shut up and dribble. This yeah. man, that's, playing basketball is just something that he that he was gifted. That's one of his super super uh, powers. That that doesn't mean he he can't think. He's just a robot that plays a sport. Exactly. You know, so yeah. I appreciate you uh, coming up with the idea to to spawn from that first podcast <laughs> as a guest to. Okay, why don't we do one together? Shit is, let's do it. Let's 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 grow it. It's been fun, and you talk about uh, you know having something our, our listeners can can relate to, or you know something they can learn from. Dante, I've learned from this podcast just sitting here. I've learned in my relationship with you from this podcast. I mean, I've reached out to you in times of you know challenging times, and uh, and and grown and learned from you, you know. And should I be learning learning from you guys and learn from myself? <laughs> Like after after you like, you go back and you watch stuff, and then you 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 listen to it. Like you try to step out of yourself and try to try to see it, try to watch the movie as a as a member of the audience, right? Yeah. And it's a lot of perspective, you yep. know. And and there's a lot of information, you know. We will ramble, we'll you know digress, you know, we'll jump off, we'll run off on a tangent. But you, there's so many. There's so many nuggets and jewels being dropped in a in a in a in a in a real true conversation, and a person that has the the mental fortitude to understand keywords and and can identify with things that you say, that's big because it's we're just having a conversation. It's fun, you know, whatever. But it's you know it's a lot of truth in the conversation, and there's somebody somewhere that this made their day. This this helped them. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure, Ted. Yeah, you talk about the mental health yeah. thing. You know, you talk about, you know, there's a lot of athletes that suffer from, you know, mental health. You know, because yeah. it, 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 you're different. You can't just go talk to anybody because they can't understand you because they, they never done what you do. Yeah. So it, 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 it's always good to take off the helmet, if you will. Take yeah. off the gloves. Take off the cleats. You know, put the basketball down right and just yeah. be you as the person because like i said that person is more than what they do as an occupation or you know a profession so you want to you want to hear everybody's thought process because there's a lot of similarities like yep. you know, people from all over the place it's like oh man i i grew up this way i don't know you from a can of paint damn you grew up the same way mm -hmm. like you had the same struggles You've you've yeah. gone through the same adverse situations that I have, and we can learn yeah. from each other, and you can build this uh, fraternity, if you will. Well, that's the thing, Dante. You and every other professional athlete out there are all humans. Every movie theater actor, sorry, a uh, uh, actor, musician, athlete—they're all people. They all suffer from the same things. Of course, you can relate because we're all human. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I There's mean, nothing it's, different. It's, that's the common denominator. Yeah. But, you know, as a, as a human, we put people on pedestals based on, you know, economics and social status. And we got to mm -hmm. remember 
you're the same person as me. And I've, I've been a professional athlete. So I've been in that, that room with the celebrities and people with a lot of zeros in their bank accounts. And there's still people still, they still, you know, got to get up and brush their teeth. Still got to put yeah. the shoes on one foot at a time. Put yeah. the pants on one leg at a time. You know, Dion yeah. didn't just get up and levitate and his clothes jumped on him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> put all that bullshit in the back of their head, further in the back of their head and go out there and perform. That's it. Just like you and I put the bullshit in the back of our head and go out, go to work. You got, you got yeah. to. You know, yeah. and I, I did it for a long time. And, you know, some of my teammates know and maybe some of my coaches, but it was a time in my life when I was going through a, my divorce and I went through depression. And if I was not playing professional football, I don't know how that would have turned out for yeah. me personally. Yeah. You know, it helped me because I was able to ball all of that emotion up and throw it in there. And, 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 and my outlet was being with my brothers, going to war every week and, and, yeah. and, and, and being, my mind being occupied, my mind, body, and soul being occupied with, you know, football. And, you know, you take music, you take sport, you take cigar smoking. Some of these things, there's there's, there's no color barrier. There is no color. We, we all are doing something. We have a common thing and we have a thing in common. So it, 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 it bridges and it, and, it, and it builds relationships. And you kind of put, economic social status race color and creed you put that to the side because we're all you know doing something that we both enjoy or we all have something in common that supersedes all that bullshit yeah so it's dope yes sir thank you for joining us on this episode of inside the minds podcast with dante marsh and ryan hyde Check out our Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter accounts to see our upcoming show announcements, links to our previous shows, and sound bites. And don't forget to hit that follow button while you're there. Hey, this is Logan Bandy. Hi, this is Zane Frazier. This is Art Jimerson. Chris Raining. This is Boots Electric, and thank you for joining me on my special guest spot on Inside the Minds podcast, where everybody wants to be if they're smart. Good field position start, play action. Burris going to load it up, but he's short on the throw. Intercepted. Dante Marsh has his 30th career interception and a good return back into Ottawa territory. Well, the usually strong-armed Henry Burris comes up short.